And it's been another roller coaster ride in the world of cryptocurrency, with the price dipping down to near 5,700 over the weekend, which, by the way, is the lowest it's been since February, and then rising up uh, past 6,300 today, 600 point swing in the matter of just a few days. Never a dull moment. Uh, so, what are some of the uh, reasons that we might have seen this rise today, and have we hit bottom? So this is the other side of, of the trade last weekend where Japan came out and said it was going to enhance the, the regulation and the scrutiny of accounting standards, cybersecurity standards, and most of all, know your customer and anti-money laundering standards. And to really understand this trade, you have to go back to when China first made cryptocurrencies illegal. Um, and what you saw with that is you saw a lot of the flow and the volume from those exchanges move over to Korean and Japanese exchanges, but dominantly Korean exchanges at that time. Um, and then Korea did something similar to what Japan did uh, last weekend, um, which was look at anti-money laundering, KYC um, uh, standards and and then right when they announced that, you saw a lot of flow, you saw a bit of a sell-off, and then you saw flow move over into Japanese exchanges. So I think we're seeing the same things here, where they're saying, we're going to take a real close look at know your customer, anti-money laundering. The same constituencies that originally came from China are moving over to other exchanges. To say exactly what the catalyst was, a lot of people think it was a 250 million uh, tether print. Uh, but that's really an effect or a result of what happened here. And I'll hand it back over to Luke to kind of take the tinfoil hat off the, off the Tether situation and explain to you what's really going on. Yeah, so Tether, if you've been following cryptocurrency for any period of time, um, people have been talking about Tether uh, print or people printing Tether causing pumps in the price of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies since uh, the middle of last year. Uh, and, well, even before that, it was kind of this conspiracy theory. Using uh, some analysis that we've done on it, we don't believe that to be the case. We believe that almost all Tether issuance can be tied directly to uh, external capital coming into the market uh, or money moving from, uh, you know, the, the dollar denominated or Korean won or yen dominated pairs and moving to Tether denominated exchanges. So there are a lot of exchanges out there like Bitrix and Polo and Binance and uh, Huobi or OKX that all use Tether as the base pair. And we've seen the uh, volume increase on those massively uh, for quite a, quite a while. And so what we may be seeing here is a flow from the Japanese exchanges into you know a place like Binance, which is in Malta, has mm -hmm. much... Um, more lenient uh, KYC and AML restrictions, if you will. So yeah, that's, that's, there's the tether piece. So to sort of summarize that, um, we saw, on this move, we saw Bitcoin dominance move from 0.37 to 0.44 as people were moving out of alts um, into Bitcoin to kind of move cash over. Uh, we see some of that dominance unraveling. We see uh, Bitcoin dominance going from about 0.44 down to 40% of the market as they get redeployed into some alternatives. Um, we actually feel okay making our first high confidence call off this. Um, so this was like a triple test of bottoms. Um, we see a lot of near-term very positive catalysts. Uh, we're seeing a lot of banks and asset managers um, start to look at this from an efficient frontier perspective. Uh, most portfolio allocation will look at uh, you know, some mix of equities, bonds, and how that uh, moves it up the standard deviation um, and return uh, plot it, called the efficient frontier. And uh, a lot of the banks that we're talking to are looking at allocating one, three percent slices into their traditional um, retirement models. Something of that magnitude is a, is a few trillion dollar catalyst um, just at a small amount of participation. Um, and that still has ability to uh, triple, quadruple net the market caps this year. So um, we think from a risk reward perspective, we're in an amazing place. Uh, we have 
uh, no problem saying from here, this is a very near term probabilistic uh, bottom. Um, and in long term, I, I think you'll look back and, and say around these levels were a historically great time to get in. Yep. So there you have it. Thank you very much for watching the Daily Crypto Trader Report. We're excited to see you later this week.